This fan dumping popcorn on Westbrook's head. New York fan appeared to spit at Trey Young. During the Jazz Grizzlies game, some fans made some racially insensitive and lewd comments toward Ja Morant's parents. Let I me mean, honest, man, it is getting out of hand, uh, especially for me. All the things that's not going to represent our league, represent our players, or represent these respective teams, you all know what the line is when you cross it. This week, the Knicks released the following statement after a fan was seen spitting on Trey Young. We investigated the matter and determined that this patron, who is not a season ticket holder, did indeed spit on Trey Young, and for that reason, he is now banned from the Garden indefinitely. We apologize to Trey and the entire Atlanta Hawks organization for this fan's behavior. This was completely unacceptable and will not be tolerated in our venue. We have turned the information over to the appropriate authorities. Also, coming out last night was the Jazz banning three fans. The fans made vulgar and racist comments to John Moran's parents, the father of the Memphis Grizzly star guard telling ESPN, a statement from the Jazz cited one verbal altercation that occurred during Utah's 141-129 victory on Wednesday night in Game 2 of a first-round playoff series. Stephen A., I will start with you. Did the NBA come down hard enough on fan behavior? I don't think so. I think they need to be a bit stiffer, a bit tougher, because I think that there is cause for concern. A dear friend of mine who's an executive in the NBA been very, very well connected, has been a part of the NBA for the last 30 years or so, brought something to my attention that I had never thought about before, to be quite honest with you. I never put the pieces together, and I was really, really interested in coming on the show and sharing it with the both of you. <clears throat> Talked about the elements that exist that should heighten our level of awareness and concern as it pertains to the modern-day athlete. And there's two things going on that can't be ignored. To a lesser degree would be the first one, gambling. If y'all recall, a little more than 18 months ago or so, that landmark decision by the, by the Supreme Court uh, basically lifting federal bans on sports betting um, in, in particular states. You know, and, and, you know, you couldn't gamble on sports outside really the state of Nevada. You just, just wasn't something that you were allowed to do. And the federal courts, you know, the Supreme Court actually struck down a federal ban on sports gambling uh, that prohibited betting on sports in most states. And since that, they left it up to the states. Well, what has happened? Not all states, states like Connecticut and California, they haven't legalized gambling on sports or whatever. But legislation has been proposed in some of those states, according to what I've read. But New York allows it. New Jersey allows it. Maryland allows it. Michigan allows it, Pennsylvania allows it, Delaware allows it, Illinois and Indiana allow it, stuff like that. And so when you consider the fact that you can go into an arena like Philadelphia, somebody told me, and they said they wanted to get Wi-Fi. And just to get Wi-Fi, you had to get like a Bally sports app or something like that on your phone just to be able to get the app. Well, what that does is it makes gambling easier and more accessible to the customer out there. So you go to a game instead of a casino and you know you just bet a few hundred, a few thousand dollars or somebody or whatever. And then you see them messing up in the game. Who knows how that could cause you to react? That's one element. Here's the bigger element that we've also ignored. Particularly since the passing of George, since George Floyd's murder. OK, since Derek Chauvin was convicted of murder, we all know that George Floyd was murdered. Think about the social unrest that took place over the last year and think about how all of these athletes, particularly with NBA, WNBA, NFL athletes at the forefront. Um, we've all spoken about the fact everybody hasn't embraced that. Matter of fact, millions upon millions of people have been against that. They think that. Athletes should shut up and play. They think they should stay in their place. They believe that politics should have absolutely nothing to do with the world of sports. We want to be entertained and we want to go home. We know all of this. This is the first time because of COVID that the fans have had an opportunity to be in front of these individuals. Molly, you made the adroit point of pointing out yesterday how it seems to happen to the black athlete. It's not the white athletes that's getting spit on, it's getting popcorn thrown at them or anything like that. It's the black athlete that has suffered from this. 
Well, it was the black athlete that was standing up and protesting for a righteous cause on behalf of us as a society and particularly their community. There's a whole bunch of people that didn't like that but wasn't close enough to them to react. Now there are. And that could be a reason why we're seeing some of the things that we're I seeing. Think, I, I think, want to hear y'all response to that. I think those are two very interesting points. First, I'll say I think the league, although I'd like to know when the Knicks release a statement saying the, the appropriate authorities, name the authorities. Do you mean the league? Do you mean the law? Because the I, league, I would assume the law, Max. Okay, me too. But like, yeah. I'd like to know explicitly. Uh, you know, it didn't escape my attention either that this fan who spat on someone got the same punishment that Charles Oakley got for living, apparently, you know, like yeah. thrown out and arrested. Um, but, but at any rate, I'll say this. When you ban a fan indefinitely, I think you've done your part. Now it's up to the legal authorities, mm -hmm. right? And Trey Young said he didn't want to press charges. That's a menschy thing to do. Hopefully the guy's learned his lesson. Maybe Westbrook will want to press charges. But that, to me, Stephen A., is a legal issue separate and apart from the league. As I said yesterday, when you buy a ticket and enter arena, you have not exited civilization. You are still in civil. You're still in the United States of America. It's not some special embassy that doesn't count as part of America, some yep. foreign embassy where the rules are somehow different. You're subject to United States law, to the laws of the state in which that arena is. So, like, all that stuff should be obvious, right? And if someone wants to press charges, good for them. Behave yourselves like people, please. Fans, right? Like, you're not animals. You're people. And treat players as people also. Okay, that's one. But I want to address your point, Stephen A. I want to engage with that point. It's more interesting to me. Um, I think that against the backdrop of what this country has experienced in recent years, you know, sports, sports is a great diversion. And I think the greatest consumer product is entertainment because the stakes feel real. But in fact, they're trivial. The stakes are actually trivial. If your favorite team wins or loses, right? This is not 2,000 years ago where city-states are going to war. Washington versus Philadelphia, they're actually at war. The, the sports represents that sort of thing. My, my city's better than your city. But the stakes are actually trivial. But, Stephen A., when you count in things like the protests and civil unrest along racial justice line, injustice lines, when you factor in gambling, when people actually have money on the line, now the stakes feel realer. You know why? Because they are realer. And suddenly sports goes from, wow, this is an amazing almost drug that, that, a pro that gives you the feeling of real world stuff. But in fact, it's okay. In the end, it's not going to change your life. Two, actually, this might be life changing. I have money on the line here. Actually, this rep you know, that athlete represents a larger political struggle that is actually real to me. And his winning and that team's winning means more power to the other side. I think those are things worth considering. I'm glad you brought it up. They're very much worth considering. And they, I mean, when you consider, listen, the reality is, is that we live in a better society than, than, than what it used to be. Um, and on many, many occasions, when I look at white America, I always say, if you're not prejudiced, if you're not racist, if you're not somebody who engages in a level of entitlement that's incredibly alarming, that you don't mind the discrepancy and the unfairness that exists for your race of people compared to black folks and other minorities in this nation. We're not talking about you. We're not talking about you at all. But we can't ignore the fact that there's a segment of our populace that when they look at the modern day athlete, they feel you have absolutely nothing to complain about. You're getting paid the exorbitant amount of dollars that you're getting paid. We don't give a damn about your humanity. Shut the hell up and do what you're paid to do, which is entertain us and go on about your business. And the level of animosity and vitriol that's aimed in an athlete's direction, I think, has heightened since the whole social justice movement yeah. really took on a life of its own over the last year. And then the part about gambling. Well, that's simple. Yeah. I mean, if you go to gamble and you feel you losing money, you can point to a tangible target as the cause for your pockets being a bit thinner than they used to be an hour earlier, two hours earlier, whatever, that's going to elevate your level of animosity mm -hmm. towards that person. So I think all of those things get taken into consideration, and that's why professional sports really, really need to hunker down on fan behavior now more than ever. 
I just want to add this because I said this yesterday that it's it's assault uh, for throwing something at somebody like throwing food and it's battery for spitting on someone. And I think you brought up two excellent points, Stephen A., with the social justice movement and with the gambling aspect, but it's still unexcusable. I mean, I don't think there's a greater sign of disrespect than spitting on someone. Right. And I understand that Trey Young didn't want to probably deal with it and press charges, and I understand that, and I respect that. But almost just for the principle of it, if it was me, I absolutely would. Just to show that if this it was is Russell Westbrook, he would have. And, you know, and we won't, st <laughs> and we, you won't stand for it. Uh, Max, did you want to add anything before I go? This is, I bet you if they asked Russell Westbrook, Russell Westbrook would have had the dude thrown in jail. I bet you if they asked Russell Westbrook, he would have wanted that. I, I would just second what you said, Molly. Like, th this ain't hard. Yeah. This ain't just behave like adults. Like you get to you, sporting event, you can say mm -hmm. that this guy stinks or whatever. Even with when you cuss him out, if you don't make it personal, you know. As I think it was LeBron who said, "There's a line. Everyone knows what the line is that you cro that you can't cross. You just just you know it, wherever. Like w behave like an adult. That's it. When you go to an arena. And by the way, it's supposed to be family entertainment. There might be kids We're also around. Assuming, like, use your head. We're also assuming that people are reacting in the moment. It's entirely plausible that folks come to a game Loaded, targeting yeah. a particular athlete because they don't like them. They literally bring the animosity with them. Some of them pay their tickets just to get at people well, that they, they need don't to get like. A life. And for people who are making yeah. racially targeted kind of comments towards players' families? Yeah. What? Yeah. I don't even yeah. know what to I say assure to these you, people. I assure you, they don't do that in a crowd of, of black people. I promise you, they don't do that. They shouldn't do I it. I promise ever. you, they don't do that. Yeah. Little kids know not to do these things. Grown adults don't know how to act. All right, uh, we'll leave it there, guys. New York, stand up. The Knicks are in the ATL for a crucial game three tonight with the series tied. Do you think Stephen A's excited? His message from Hot Lana coming up next. Let's get it. We're the best. 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 We're the best